This morning I'm going to be speaking to you out of the Word of God, Numbers chapter 23. Verse 5, there's a conversation here going on between Balak and Balaam. Balaam was a man of God. Balak was a, an idolatrous and king who was trying to use Balaam to advance him and, and uh, the country that he was king over. Moab. Uh, he was the king of Moab. And it says in the fifth verse of the 23rd, or 23rd chapter, it says, How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? From the top of the rocks I see him and from the hills I behold him, lo, the people shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the, the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob? By the way, Jacob's dead at this point. And the number of the fourth part of Israel. Let me die the death of the righteous. This is Balaam. And let the last be like his. And let him be like Jacob. And Balak said to Balaam, What hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse my enemies. And behold, thou hast blessed them altogether. And he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord hath put in my mouth. And Balak, uh, Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee, with me to another place, from whence mayest, uh, uh, there mayest see them, that thou shalt see the utmost part of them, and shalt not see uh, them all, and curse me from thence. How does cursing get in, in, into the issue of Christians? We go to James, if we went to James, it, say, it says, you know, out of our mouths proceed blessings and cursings. These things should not be. But Balak said, come, I pray thee, with me to another place. Uh Listen to me. He th thought the answer would be different. Place to place. He thought it would be different. And he said, From whence mayest see them, and thou shalt see them, but, not, uh, but the utmost part of them, and shalt not see them all, but curse me from thence. And he brought him up to the field of Zophim, to the top of pigs, and uh, built seven altars and offered a bullock and a ram on a, every altar. And he said to Balak, Stand here by the burnt offering while I meet with the Lord yonder. And he said, uh, And the Lord said, or met Balaam, and put a word in his mouth and said, Go unto Balak. And say thus, And when he had come to him, behold, he stood uh, by his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab with him. Balak said unto him, What hath the Lord spoken? And he took him up uh, his parable, and said, Rise. Balak, uh, rise up. And Balak, that hear, hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, 
neither the Son of Man, that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment uh, to bless, and he blessed, and cannot reverse it. Say, cannot reverse it. And he uh, had not behold, held the iniquity of Jacob, neither hath he seen the perverseness in Israel. The Lord God is with him, and the shout of the king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt, and he hath, uh, hath as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What hath God wrought? Behold, the people rise, shall rise up as a great lion and lift up himself as a young lion, and he shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink of the blood of the slain. And Balak said, has said unto Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Balaam answered and said unto him, uh, unto Balak, uh, Told not I thee, saying that all the Lord speak that I must do. Balak said unto Balaam, Come, I pray thee, I will bring thee unto another place. Peradventure, it will please God that thou mayst curse me and, the, and them from thence. Balak brought the Balaam up to the top of Peor and looketh down toward Jerusalem. And Balaam said to Balak, Build me here seven altars and prepare me seven bullocks and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. I want to give you the story of this. He was trying to hire a man to bring a curse on the people of God. And so Balaam had... You know, if you read in the 22nd chapter, Balaam had, uh, he was going to try to do that. And there was an angel that appeared, and, uh, and he had a donkey with him. And the donkey laid down, wouldn't let him pass through a passage. And Balaam actually stru uh, struck three times the donkey. And then the the first misread, the angel put words in a donkey's mouth. And so when he spoke through the donkey, he said to him that you can't curse what God has blessed, and it will not be reversed. And then Balaam saw that there was an angel giving words to the donkey. And then he fell down on his face. He wanted the angel to kill him, but he didn't do it. He told him that he had, to, he had things to say, things to do. God is uh, irreversibly blessed, the people of God. And I want you to hear me when I say that. No matter what things look like to you, Things don't change. God doesn't change. And so when God does something, we are blessed with the blessing knowing that God has said it and that it will not be turned around. If God has said it, it will not be turned around. So having said that to you this morning, what God blesses, no man can curse. And I've had people that have done that toward me over the years, tried to curse me, you know, saying one thing and another that were not true. 
and then and running off and doing things that you know you've seen it and uh, and the adversary tried to use them to distort what God had said from the beginning but from the beginning this work continues I continue even against all odds because the Lord God said we were going to do that he told us what to expect what God blesses no man can curse what God delivers no man can bind and the people that had been delivered have been delivered from the hand of the adversary and nobody can put them back in bondage now I want you to know this because you need to see and hear what the Bible says and the greatest enemy of the Word of God is your mind when you try to change what God says you have moved in a direction away from God Balaam and Balak had this argument through three chapters and it didn't matter where they went God wasn't going to reverse what he said no matter what he wasn't going to reverse what he said but what God delivers no man can bind and there was that that was trying to bind Israel that there was that that was trying to curse Israel but God had already said they're going to be blessed and they won't uh, there won't be a change in that until all of the prey are eaten up that means that he was going to take away the enemies from the midst of them and it was not going to change from that moment forward so and here's the other thing what God saves no man can condemn and I've had people that say all kinds of things that does not make it true you know there is no condemnation to the, them that are in Christ Jesus that's me and you if you're a believer then then there is no condemnation in what God has done the blessings of God are irrefutable irreversible he has already said it and he he actually tells us in several places in the body or in the Bible not that what he has said wouldn't the Lord do what he has said he doesn't change now I want you to know when I'm saying this to you today as a human the adversary plays with your mind and he wants to twist things to make you see things differently than they are but God has already said what I've said will be accomplished I watch over my word to perform it it does not change it will not change first thing that we're going to talk about is what God gives cannot be taken away in Romans chapter 11 29 for the gifts of uh, God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn listen to me there have been a lot of people all over the years that wanted the call to be withdrawn but I want to tell you something there's no way that the call of God can be withdrawn the gifts that he gives are not something that are that are going to be taken away you will have them to the day that you, he takes you home what he called you to do doesn't change it doesn't it doesn't change from place to place and I need to say that to you it doesn't matter where you go the call is not the, is not changed the issue is going to be with you to the end okay so God has given gifts and he's given a calling and it can't be withdrawn okay and so when we look at what God has done he has, say, has said to humans I'm going to use you and then he says uh, to those other humans that come around you know like Balak you know you're always going to have a Balak and that says something that that God didn't say well, let's go over here maybe it'll be different over here and we're gonna we're gonna offer sacrifices on every mountain and it was the same answer every time God has given an irreversible word of God that uh, that word and that call is forever it's not going to change the second thing that I wanted to say is his word never comes back empty 
in Isaiah 55, 11, it says, It is the same with my word. Now I want you to listen to that. It is the same with my word. I send it out, but it always produces fruit. The word of God is never coming back void. It will accomplish all I want it to. It is not about you. It is about him. It is about his word. And when we do what he said, then his word will be uh, fruitful. And it will prosper everywhere that I send it. Wherever his word is preached. Now I want to say this to all of us in this room. We are, no matter where we are, we are to be his witnesses to everyone. When we are out there, we're commanded to bring to them the word of truth so that they will not perish everywhere we go, that they would not perish. The Bible says that if we would do that, and we would do that, and we would do that, then the fruit of that would be produced in us, and we would accomplish all that he wanted us to accomplish. So, this is, this is a command of God. This word is a short word today. But this is a word of God to all of us in this room. It will accomplish all that I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. The third thing. What God opens cannot be closed. Do you know how many times people have tried to close this work? Curse this work. But it has uh, a life that comes from not men. It comes from God. Revelations 3, 7 says, What he opens... Have you ever tried to open something that was shut? and you couldn't get it open. But what he opens, no one can close. And what he closes, no one can open. You know, there are things that are not of God. They're fruitless things that go on because they're not representative of what he's saying. It's representing something else. But Revelations 3 says what he opens. And let me say this to you. When God opens something, hell itself, you know, it's souls, it, it, it'll try to do all the, that God wants to shut it down. But listen, what he opens, no one can close. No one. I remember pastoring a church in South Georgia, and people were wanting to shut the doors because there were so few and they asked me if I would go and be an interim pastor. You remember that day, don't you, Sheila? <clears throat> I think there were 13 people there. Nice church building. Uh, they had put all, poured all the money into carpet and pews and things like that. And uh, these people had gotten so down in the mouth about what was going on with that church that they said, we're just going to close it. Let me say this to you. The church doesn't belong to any human. It belongs to God. And what God starts, he finishes. What he opens, no man can close. And what he closes, no man can open. I said to three people that were the, the deacons, elders of this work, that the... And the denomination that I was with at that time was saying go in there and try to help them try to bring healing and that kind of thing they'd been through five pastors in five years and I stayed for five years and on the day that I planned to leave I couldn't go when I, got, I went it was because he said today okay and so we moved from Quitman, Georgia, 
to Macon, Georgia. You know, can't to quit <laughs> because, you know, people here are very religious, but there are very few of them that have a relationship with God. But what he opens cannot be closed. What he closes cannot be opened. Number four, what God starts, no one could stop. In Isaiah 43 and 13, from eternity to eternity. Now, I need you to hear, hear this word because eternity to eternity doesn't take time into it. It's the way it was from the beginning, and it doesn't change. It is eternity. It doesn't have a clock ticking in it. He says, from eternity to eternity, I'm God. And no one can snatch anyone out of my hand. No one can undo what I have done. The work isn't what people do in his name. It's what he did. But what he tells us, that this was from the beginning before we got here, he had plans for it. And when he had a plan for something that it couldn't be changed, he said it was going to be from eternity to eternity. And at the, look at those last words. No one can undo what I have done. Okay? What God tells you, number five, cannot be unsaid. God doesn't speak, and there's a reason he doesn't speak to most people because they want to hear what they want to hear, and they don't want to hear what God has to say. Numbers chapter 23, verse 20 through 21, and it says this, Behold, I received a command to bless and he has blessed, and I cannot revoke it. He has not, uh, or has he not beheld misfortune in Jacob? Nor has he seen trouble in Israel? The Lord their God is with them, and the shout of the king is among them. When God is for you, who can be against you? Listen to me. I know that those that are here, you know, when you hear things like today, that you get down in the heart, especially when you are just hearing it, you know, and that kind of thing. But let me say to you, the Lord has, over the years, I'll, I'll remind you of what he said many years ago. We had a lot of people come in and a lot of people go out. Satan does that kind of thing they he can't stay in the kitchen you know it's too hot in the kitchen anyway and i stood before you and prophesied that day and i said to you god would bring more people in because the bible actually says that that what he has called will prosper and bring forth much fruit so and the Lord shall make thee the head in Deuteronomy 28, 13. He'll make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. For if, thou, they, or if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe to do them, Understand there is a that, that command is based on the obedience and that God would bless if they would keep his command. That's the commands that he had given that day. I want to say this to you because whatever that God has called you to is going to be up against uh, those uh, those powers of hell from the day that he says it. But the good news is, is that the powers of hell cannot proceed because he tells us he's God. And what God has called us to, that will, will be prosperous and it will be fruitful. 
And no matter what happens, no matter what man, woman, boy or girl says otherwise, it doesn't matter about men, women, boys and girls saying otherwise. It matters what God said. They can't curse it. They can't change it. They can't snatch you out of the hand. God's word is eternal from eternity to eternity. So, let me say this to all of you. While I was sitting in my office this week, you know how the mind works, you know, go, going through things and all the business was going on and all of that. And then after the, the patients left, I, I got down on my knees and I prayed. And I said, God, I know there is favor in your house. I know that your favor is forever. Your anger is for the night, but favor is forever. When God calls a person, the favor goes along with the call. And when we're called according to his purpose, <coughs> and we're doing what he has said, and he has given us the witness of what we are to do. Because I promise you, it isn't what you want to do. It's what you have to do. That There was no way that Balaam want to go and do what Balak was telling him that he needed to do. And there was no amount of money that could gi be given to him that would make him do it. Because the Lord had already told Balaam. You know, what I've blessed can't curse. You know, this blessing is irrevocable. I want to make sure that you understand all blessings from God are irrevocable. Nothing that I have read today or to you can be changed. The Word of God stands true. He tells us and He has told this work what he, we, could, we could expect. People that would come, people that would go. Some of them would go, and, and we had to let them go. Some of them would come, and they'd be good for us. You remember? And when that, pro and that prophecy came, we've had many go. We've had many come. And in all of that, they have been touched by the, the, the ministry of this desk. They have been changed because of the impact of this desk. When we said that we wanted to build a, a work, we can't build the work. There's a curse on somebody that tries. The work that is built is built by the hand of God. It comes not because of the will of man. It comes because the word of God came and said, this is what you do. Go build that altar. Go build seven altars. Go put some bullocks on those altars. And, but, and while you're doing that, it, you're blessing them. And the other, on the other side, there's a, there's a Balak sitting there. You know, curse them. Curse them. No. We don't curse what God has blessed. It can't be cursed. Anyway, we need to know that what Jesus has done for us that we stand up and we believe and we let our mouth declare what he said, not what we think. We declare what he said. Jesus has already gave it to us. All that's going to happen for us from this time to the time he calls us home, God has already provided it through Jesus Christ. Jesus has already opened up the Word so that there is understanding of His Word. There is no understanding without His Spirit, but there is understanding when He gives us understanding through His Holy Spirit. He will reveal all things to us and remind us of all that Jesus had said. Jesus started it. Who started it? Okay, who's going to finish it? The author and finisher of our faith. 
Jesus has already said it. Who will disannul it, not allow it? If God said that I'm blessed, I'm blessed. No curse of man. No word uh, spoken against me. Nothing except his word will be fulfilled. It will be fulfilled. We know that when we go through hours uh, of not understanding what's going on, that your mind can get in the way. Today, I want to say to you, you know, we want what God wants. He prepared this message in advance. That we have already got His Word to stand up and to believe that we are going to continue steadfast, unmovable to the end. With many or with few we will still listen, and I, I want to I want to prophesy this too. Everything that God does, He trims, and when He trims, more fruit. Every time He trims, more fruit, and that fruit will remain. Understand what God has said to us in His Word about this. Now, I'm getting ready to close. Can you imagine this? <laughs> the issue of this message, we have to find the strength and the humility within our souls to open up our lives and to allow God to be in control of our lives. No man controls his life. That's out of control. No man is called a man. They're all called of God or they're not called. Everything that God does is in, in order. And with it, it brings order. So whatever he does, we say, Amen. And whatever he allows, we say, Amen. We're not the ones uh, directing and controlling. We're the ones that say, Your will be done. Amen. Amen.